tuned into the show that informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report. And now, here are your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges and Glenn Lippy Tower. Brought to you in part by Blue Line Graphics, Wicked Fabrication, O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, South Bay Automotive, Creative Ink and Design, and Scott Seal Coat. Informing, improving, and inspiring racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report, Wednesday nights, 630, exclusively at terrybridges.com. And now, back to your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges, Glenn Tower, and Jeff Eden. Oh, oh, what is going on, everybody? Another great winning Wednesday here at the Northwest Race Report. I am your horsepower and performance broadcaster, Terry Bridges, bringing it to you live. That's right. We don't do it, and we don't edit it. We just do it live, just like you do in your race car or your race cart or your race bike. It's all live. We're keeping it real right here. Sitting with me, he's the best co-host in the business. He's not even really a co-host. That's not even fair. He's uh, he's the other host. That makes him sound like he's below. We work together. We don't work for or against. That is Mr. Glenn Lippy Tower. What's going on, Lippy? We are co-conspirators, and I am good. Yes. How's the week been so far? Busy, but uh, but good, productive, busy, uh, yeah, making money and uh, and uh, getting it done. Well, hey, making money is the name of the game. For sure. But, you know, a show like this, uh, yeah, everybody says, well, geez, they've always got the hot dogs, they've always got the good... Well, I'm going to tell you what. We have changed it up a little bit tonight. We got one of the coolest guys uh, in the sport and uh, in our Cascade Carding Association club, um... And he's starting to get things figured out. See, they were pounding on him because nothing was running worth the tinker's darn. But once he got it running, look out. And uh, his name, he's without his band, is Steve Miller. What's going on, Steve? How's it going, Terry? Dude, it is going awesome. Now, Steve is just, how many years have you been doing it? Uh, this will be my, at, at the end of the season, right. that was uh, my second year doing it. Yeah. There's a lot to learn. I mean, I mean, I know when I was doing it, the second year, your your head's still kind of going. I mean, you're actually getting it slowed down, but it's still spinning. So he's going to be here tonight. He's going to be hanging out with us. And he's even going to have some tips for some of you new guys that are sitting there going, yeah, but he's already in and I'm way new. And so I don't know what to do. He's going to fix that. He's going to give you some basic, simple deals. But here's how, here's how it works. It won't work. If you don't listen and attempt to apply it, that's the way everything goes, right? So uh, be sure you pay attention because he's going to have some good stuff. Lippy, what, uh, what's been going on in your world? Uh, it's all been good, you know, just... Uh, You've been kind of quiet and not your <laughs> jovial, you know, uh, lippy self. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm tired and uh, and a lot on my mind, so it... Uh, it's it has been busy. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a lot going on out there right now, and uh, yeah, it uh, it's uh, it's taking its toll on me, definitely. Yeah, I'll bet I'll, I'll bet it has. Well, it's one done at the end of the year. You're right. You're tired. It's like oh my goodness. Um, I can feel it here even right. You're you're thrashing trying to get this that and the other thing, and and. Uh, but, of course, I have ADD anyway, so I'm always over here. Squirrel. Oh, yeah. What was that? Oh, no. Turn Facebook off. But, anyway, we got a great show for you tonight. Uh, we've got two of the best in the business. we got a war of a weekend coming up at Grace Harbor, uh, the final uh, championship weekend for the uh, Northwest Ford Focus Midgets. Uh, gosh, and I would do this because I didn't have my list. Nick Evans is your point leader, but not by very much. Dose. Two points. And it's going to come down the wire, right? Which is what you want. But you got Renee Angel. You got uh, Chance Crum, who, by the way, Chance Crum is our other guest. He's going to be calling first in our Blue Line Graphics uh, in the seat guest tonight. And our second one is going to be the lovely and ever fast uh, Renee Angel. You know, her motto always is, if you can catch me, you can. No, no. Oh, no, wait. That was on a move. Nah, never mind. <laughs> so. She's going to be on tonight. I'll be about uh, probably around 7.20 or so, and uh, or 7.10. And we're going to talk to them about the series, how their season went, and uh, 
just what's going on. Uh, there's a lot going on. Back even back east, uh, Johnny Cash won the Triple Crown, so I think he's won the insane one. And uh, I never could find out who officially won that thing. Have you ever looked at a scoring sheet from one of those things? No. Uh, I mean, it, they do it right. It says quality, but but nothing's broken down. So it's just this big, long list. So you have to go. Sometimes they go R. Sometimes they go Q. Sometimes they go H. But you go, and then you get there, and, and, and then it's got feature. A feature one, A feature, huh? Right? <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know. So when I get those, I just kind of go, well, uh, I, you know, I don't know. So I don't, I don't know. I know it was a big one back east uh, in South Carolina, I do believe. Johnny Cash won that. He won $50,000 last year at the biggest go-kart race in the country. Uh, it was called the Insane One. It was 50000 to win. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. $10,000 on uh, Saturday. So he walked out of there with about sixty grand for the weekend. He said that was over $100,000 in prize money that he had won racing go-karts. Wow. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's, uh, that's making some money there. Yes, it is. You can do it back east, I'm telling you. And, and I'm telling you, they no sooner were done with the insane one, and they were loading up, and they were headed that next weekend to... I don't know, somewhere, I think it was uh, Carolina or Tennessee. I mean, it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. So, but good stuff. But we do got a good show for you. So we got Chance Crum going to be talking to us. He, he's he been getting it done. He was, by the way, our core FM, our good folks over there in Wenatchee that got their uh, show on Tuesday nights. Core FM, Kelly Dean Hart, picked him as the uh, driver of the year for the Ford Focus Midget Series. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean... Even if, well, I don't know, maybe it is. I, I, I thought it was, but even if it's not the official series uh, award, that's still, that's letting you know somebody thought you were the driver of the year, right? There you go. I've never gotten one of those, have you? Nope. So, hey, tell us something. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about, um, I thought, well, you know, there's been a lot of stuff going on. End of the year, good way to start in on your fresh start, either for the indoor or if you're going to put it to bed and tuck it in for its uh, hibernation. I got some mindset things you should be thinking about that I'm pretty confident will uh, help get you going. You wanna, uh, do you want to go through the Straby stuff first? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, it is Winter Circle Wednesday, and Lippy's raring to go, <laughs> and we do got to do it. So I was just letting you know. So we got we got Renee Angel, we got Chance Crumb, we got uh, your mindset, Hero to Zero, what you got to do to... Uh, it's about seven, eight things that you got to do to get yourself ready to rock and roll. Some you may have heard, some you haven't. Um, but nonetheless, you're going to hear them again until like you get it. them down pat. There you go. So uh, lots of exciting stuff going on in Salem. Uh, coming up, uh, Jason Suchich, you'll see on the Northwest Race Report Facebook page. We got all the schedules up there, posted those up today. So get by there and check those out. It's time to go. Winter Circle wins Dan. Hang tight. And as always, tonight's Winter Circle Wednesday is brought to you by the good folks at Wicked Fabrication in Auburn, Washington. Wicked Fab been doing the best in automotive fabrication since 2002. They're in Auburn. Craig Wick and his gang, they'll treat you right. And uh, they're the best in the biz. Wickedfab.com online, or you can go to Facebook, Wicked Fabrication. Um, Streeby Speedway. Have you heard of Streeby Speedway? Yes, I have. Have you been there? I've never been there before. You know, if he asks me again, I I, I think I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna trade. I'm gonna ask him if I can put my driver in it, <laughs> and I'll bring Steve Miller. And he can go run street. He can sit in the seat. Awesome! I'll do that for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it'd be cool, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's a great fun track, no doubt about it. If you get the invitation, you should take the chance because it's uh it's a good time. It is not like a normal go kart race. No, no. I, and Ronnie said, you know, you're, I mean, because I was like, wow, this, you know, but I get it. It's still awesome. It's still, I mean, it's way awesome. Yeah. It's a fun time. So, I mean, if you're not doing nothing on weekend, right? Who wouldn't want to go turn some laps, even if it is 
maybe a paper clip. The 4th of July show was off the hook, it, too. If, mm-hmm. if you're going to make one of them, that's the one to make. And, uh, and yeah, it is small, but that's the way backyard tracks work. You know, they are small, and it tests driving skills. It tests uh, cart... Uh, um, what would you say? Set up, uh, right? It tests a lot of things, so it's a it's a great little track and, and a lot of fun. There's a grip all over it, and uh, it's just a a matter of working your way through the field, really. So, and you got to get up on the wheel, baby, because oh, they're coming. Boy. If you if you get out of line for a minute, woo woo, the petticoat junction is coming through <laughs> for sure. Well, what do you got there? Who who was uh so we who, got, who was fast time? So we got qualifying uh with uh Michael Streeby coming in number one, Matt Streeby coming in number two, Nick Hall number three, Ryan Cully number four, Jim Streeby, which is dad, I believe, is uh out there making some laps. He comes in fifth right in front of Ronnie Cox, uh Taylor Wood and Clint Memes and uh Anna Gilhard, Gilhard, uh, coming in number nine. Nice. So our, uh, let's see, our first uh, heat race, uh, Ryan Cully pulls that one down with Clint Memes in second and Michael Streeby in third, Jim Streeby in fourth, and Anna coming in fifth. Uh, heat race two, Ronnie Cox pulls that one down with uh, Nick Hole right behind him, Taylor Hood, and Matt Streeby right behind him. Uh, heat race three, Michael Streeby pulls that one down. Taylor Hood, Jim Streeby, and Nick Hall did not finish. There you go. You got to keep that longevity going, folks. Uh, heat race four, the final one. Ryan Cully pulls that down. Ronnie Cox comes in number two on that one. Clint Meme and Matt Streeby and Anna comes in. Nope, nope. She did not start. So another one of them. You got to keep that stuff running. Uh, the dash lineup, Michael Streeby, Ryan Cully, Matt Streeby, and Ronnie Cox comes in fourth on that one. Uh, main event, they inverted the start on that. Uh, took the back row challenge. Started eighth, uh, inserted it to the pole. Uh, winner with a bonus money. Oh, they even threw money at that one. Nice. So, um... I'm not sure if this is finishing order. Uh, number five, Ryan Cully got to pick up the uh, choice and uh, start on the outside front row. So this must be this must be the the lineup for the start, but I don't see the finishing order. Anyways, uh, uh Ryan Cully, Nick Hall, Ronnie Cox coming in third, Taylor Hood. Michael Streeby, Clint Meme, uh, Jim Streeby, Anna, and Matt Streeby coming in ninth. Uh, looks like the hard charger was Michael Streeby, plus three spots. No surprise there. That guy's a rocket on his home track there. Who, who is it, Michael? Yes. Yes. The guy can roll, man. Well, it makes you wonder how how uh, how his brother can be so, so uh, fast, but he's not up there taking poles and winds and stuff up there battling him well because he doesn't run as much i'm not so sure it's that at all but uh it might be a a weight difference that uh is uh hampering him so it looks like i'm looking at the points now and it looks like michael streeby pulls it down number one yeah i'm getting in and out of my ears there we go now i got all my ears in uh, looks like Michael Streeby, Nick Hall, Taylor Hood, Matt Streeby, Ryan Cully, uh, Riley Hood, Ronnie Cox, Jeff Barry, Rick Sears, Kinsey Thomas, Matt Hanley, Jim Streeby, Clint Meem, Alan Ta- Ta- Torrance Torrance. Terrell, I think. Man, oh, what yeah. is going on with my uh, headphones? I, yeah, I think I screwed them up. So Yeah, it's something on your side that's doing that. Uh, Chuck Knutson, Gail Stewart. There we go. So it looks like there's quite a few people, and I'm quite near the bottom in that list. Uh, owner points. Um, I 
I don't see a finishing order, though. But that was their last race of the season up there, and I believe it was the last one for their points, too. So they do a great job up there of, of having fun and keeping mm-hmm. track of everybody that's and everything that's going on uh, around the Northwest. So uh, definitely look them up. That's uh, Streeby Speedway. And, uh, you know, see what they got going on. Check out their results. They usually have most of the lineups for any of the up-and-coming races. Uh, So if you get on there, you know, be sure and register. Let them know you're going to be going to a local race so you can get some recognition. Uh, Matt does a great job of keeping track of all of our races around here. And uh, hats off to Matt. We really appreciate him and his dad and his brother, everything they do for the sport and to uh, keep that little track going up there. Absolutely. It is awesome. Uh, you know, we've got, oh, what am I going on here? There we go. I wonder if this is my, I don't know if it's my cable. Maybe that's it. Might be your cable. Right. I don't know. But it's sure crapping out, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, uh, uh well, we're going to see here. I'll let you, uh, play with it. I'm going to switch this cable out. Okay. Doke. So, uh, I'm not sure where we're going. I was still looking to, uh, see who was in our P1 today. And who we got listening with us. We do appreciate everybody that is listening with us. We tried some new things with the studio today. Adding some more screens so that uh, I don't have to use my cell phone and uh, try and keep up with everybody that's going on. I did lose one ear on this, though. So I'm not sure why that is. Um, Oh, look, we got Carly Studer on here. Nice. Jason Susich, good to see you. Brian Esquinia, uh, good as always. Mr. Chisholm showing up. Uh, Look at that, Rob Lambert. Good to see you, Doc. Uh, Hoping to see you in the next month or so. Passanetti, nice. Glad to see you. Mr. Watkins, always a pleasure. Warning, Joe Ransom, thank you for showing up. Kyle Culver, Appreciate that. And Susich was number one. Look at that. Not far off the mark was Mr. Ransom. I've been watching you online, Mr. Ransom. You're doing a great job over there. I like the wrap you finished up last week. That was a nice looking cage cart that got all finished up. And again, thank you, Mr. Culliver, for showing up as well. So good to see everybody on there. Hopefully, we'll get all of our technical difficulties around here fixed up pretty soon. Mr. Chisholm says, going to go against the grain. Historical standings. Go for the big race. UAS. You got something up your sleeve, don't you? I seen you sent some big monster motor out here towards uh, Arizona. Looking forward to see that thing race around and and uh make a good showing we don't have too many big blocks around here making the uh making the effort in the challenge so that'll be nice to see a big block uh four stroke uh out here making the laps down in arizona hopefully you got enough gear on that thing to uh not hurt it that's a an awfully big track so good luck with that and i hope you picked a good driver to put in that too so it is a challenging track with a whole lot of grip. Grip is one thing that's not a shortage down there. Well, I don't want to give away the secret because I think Chizzy said it was kind of a secret, but it will be a pretty stud and stellar West Coast driver wheeling that bad boy. Nice. I see Mr. Susich is chiming in right now with BLG wraps coming soon to Salem Indoor. That's a good thing. There's already been a few of us down there, but always enjoy to see more of the BLG stuff. They do great stuff. So uh, looking forward to that. You're not cutting out over there anymore. Nope, either. I got it. Yep. And, and we're gonna we're just waiting on our, our co-host. Uh, for those of you that uh, know him and li- been listening as of late, Jeff Eden, he's been up here for about 20 years, so he stepped in and been part of the show. And he handles usually Sunset Willamette because that's really been his four forte, the modifieds and the uh, uh, midgets and uh, sprint cars and all that stuff. So he's at home, but he's been sicker than a dog. He said he coughed up uh, the left lung, and he was working on three quarters of the right one so he thought it was better he stay home so i'm glad he did i don't want any part of that jeff if you want to call in man we're ready for you he's just going to do his results from uh from the uh, recliner 
with his uh, Vicks vapor rub and, and nice. everything else. Vicks is always good. That was my grandmother's remedy. Plenty of Vicks. There he is, the man himself, the loader, the sicky, the uh, yeah. You're a sick boy, huh? I, I'm uh, getting better slowly. <laughs> well, that's good at to least hear. I, at least I can talk a little bit today. Well, it's a good good thing. Not everything changes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, the, the slowly part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll remember that. Uh, I will. I will be back one of these days. You know. Oh, I know. You better. You better bring your A game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what do you what do you got for results for our Winter Circle Wednesday going on down there well, from sunset and everything so, else? South South and their last race of the year and uh, Super Late Models was Bob Presley, and in the Legends was Devin West. Tristan Hader finished second in that. Them two have been at each other all year long. It's uh, I think that I think Tristan, if I looked right, and I'll have I'm gonna know more in the next week or so here as soon as I get all the final points standing. But I think Tristan got him just barely in the points, so they had a good battle. Uh, the midgets went to Tony Saddleman, and oh my gosh, that guy he must have been on a rail because he lapped everybody. Wow. Yeah. Um, the regular late models um went to Larry Lassens and Long. And uh, Hobby Stocks went to Aaron and Borden and Borton. Mini Stocks went to Ramley Butler. The Bees went to Chris Banyan. And uh, Baby Grands went to Brock Crawford. And that, ne- the next thing they got on the agenda is October 15th. They're having a swap meet. So anybody looking for stuff, they might want to, you know, to start next year out, they might want to wander towards the swap meet. <laughs> and which uh, win is that? October 15th. October 15th, okay. And uh, Sunset, they had their last race of the year. Um, the late models went to Greg Walters. Uh, Greg hadn't done much racing this year, so it's kind of good to see him win one. Nice. Absolutely. Uh, the mods went to Kenny Miller. Sport mod went to Jordan Bratton. Street stock was Arnie Case, which is heard his name was a lot this year. Trevor Labarge was uh, took the pure stocks. The four Bs went to John Cartner, and the f- new Bs went to Cheyenne Long. And I was kind of impressed. The new Bs, they've just had like two, three cars, and they actually had five cars. So that class is kind of starting to pick up there a little bit. That's awesome. Well, you know, anything's a pickup. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, Willamette, their last race of the year. The Outlaw Lake Models went to Rob Maya. Uh, yeah, and he's the, and I want to excuse me, Jeff. I think isn't he the new? Uh, he is the new champion too again for the fifth time. Yeah, I'm not sure because I didn't look back on their points because it. I had trouble. It, it took them till yesterday to get the whole thing up again. So they've been kind of slow. So I'm gonna within the next couple of weeks I'll have all the tracks, their points, and who won what and all that stuff. Yeah, I hope. awesome. I do believe that is his fifth Willamette Championship though. But anyway, uh, go ahead. Uh, Mod went to who else? Superman. Colin Weinberger. Um, Sportsman. Tommy Ack. And uh, my cousin's husband, Ryan Emery, finished second. That kid been on a roll for about the last month and a half. He's finished within the top three every race since then. So that's, that's awesome. Ryan. That's really awesome. The classics was David Cronk. Um, and the Hornets was Josh Corley. Um, Yakima, the Summer Thunder Sprint Tour Series, with along with the uh, uh, watching the Modified Tour, was at the fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, night one, Jason Solwell took the sprint cars, and the Modified A Main went to Bryson James. Nice. Go and Bryson. He, he actually he was running double duty because he ran the sprint car too. So, and <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Uh, night night number two, Henry Van Dam won the sprint cars, and Mark Carroll won the the modifieds. Wow! And in a overall total of scheme of things, Jason so well won the the northern the the north the, the sprint tour race. Mm-hmm. He won the championship for mm-hmm. it. So awesome. Hats off to Jason. Um, 
And then I seen uh, through my kind of tagging through some stuff here, uh, one of your guests tonight, Mr. Chance Crum, went down to California and uh, had himself a little bit of a good time, it sounded like. He went down and won the Super 600 Nationals. That was his 13th win for the season. Wow. And then he tagged into the back of the non-wing and finished fourth. So hats off to Chance. Yeah, man, really. Dude can get her done. He's a wheel, man. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, <coughs> excuse me. No. <coughs> oh. And then don't forget this weekend. It's the last weekend for Skagit and Grays Harbor both. Mm -hmm. um, tight, tight points races at both tracks. So it should be a, a good time. Um, and uh, that's pretty much what I got there, sir. Other than I want to kind of put a bug in your ear. Okay, go ahead. For next week. Mm -hmm. I was uh, thumbing through the internet here the other day, and uh, um, I guess the easiest way, I don't want to give everything up, but um, what would you do for safety if you were a track operator? What kind of things would you do? And uh, it's kind of an interesting thing that come out of this thing, and uh, I'll be I'll be waiting to share it with you next week. Just something to think about. That's awesome. That's the kind of stuff we want to hear. We got some stuff we want to hear. Well, good stuff, Jeff. Get feeling better, buddy. Well, I'm hoping got... so. Like I said, it's getting it's slowly, but, you know, I was listening to the show as you were going along there. Yeah, absolutely. Tell, uh, tell, tell Steve Miller and the band to get a little bit closer to the mic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you know, he's just a he's just a timid guy until he gets his helmet on, so. Uh, well, put his helmet on and put the mic on. Oh, yeah, out. that's a good idea. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> Okay, Jeff. Thanks, man. We'll see you next week. All right, Terry. Hope Feeling you feel better, buddy. I'm working on it. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. That was cool. Yeah, definitely. Covering all the bases. Yeah, I was up for some dedication right there. Um, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, well, you know what's coming up? I do know uh, this weekend, other than the uh, stuff at uh, Elma, is the... Puget Sound Road Race Association. It's going to be up at the Ridge Friday, Saturday. Friday night, they're going to have a uh, nice barbecue. They're going to supply the hot dogs and um, baked beans and all that stuff. And so going up there, it's a free deal for all the racers. And then Saturday, they're having their big day. And then they're also having a you know one of the, the car days there, too, where, where they share it and split the costs and all that. So it's a good deal. Hager will be up there. So, I mean, just for that alone, we all ought to go up there and... Well, yeah, I think Hager's going to be there, and I, I either saw that uh, um, Mike uh, that was in the show not too long ago, um, he might be heading up there, or is it Clark that was heading up there as well? I'm not sure. Well, probably both of them. Uh, oh, 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 you mean uh, 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 Michelson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's heading up there with some, mm -hmm. uh, look like a world formula or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, glad to see them making their way up there. It's a great facility. I haven't been over there yet. I, I, I follow it online. Uh, it, it looks like a lot of fun, and uh, it's a... Uh, well, they even have a four-stroke class. It's a world formula. But don't forget Aaron Speed Racer Stanford. That dude, I mean, you know, we talk about this, that, and the other thing, but, I mean, on equal terms, in his forte, he's as good as, he's as, good as any of them. I mean, he's really uh, a bad boy on the shifters there in the road race. So, you know. Nice. I haven't seen him on the show, so he's probably a little mad because we don't talk about road race stuff enough. So, yeah. But I get that. Nobody uh, nobody uh, really covers that side of it. It'd be nice if we had somebody that did. I thought we had somebody that was going to. Well, we're going to do a better job of that next year. It's just, we need to get a producer. We need to get phone lines. We need to get, you know, you know, you know. So this is part of our pledge drive. We're looking for. We need seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to get. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Good stuff. Uh, looking forward to the war, the land of the giants for the midgets this weekend at Elma. Oh yeah, that's going to be a good time out there. I hope they get all that in mm -hmm. and make it happen. Yeah, and we got two great guests who will be able to talk to us about that. Um, and then coming up, Salem Indoor, man. I'm telling you, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling pumped. Um, I think we're going to hit some record numbers on the indoor this year. I sure hope so. I, I'm planning on making it down there a little bit more. I, I know Rusty's uh, going to be busy this, this winter. He's uh, taking on some new jobs, so uh, moving him.
himself around a little bit, so I'm not mm-hmm. sure how much he's going to be able to make it down there with me. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be trying making it down there uh, a few more times than I have in the past. I know Rusty thought we were booing him. I just can't believe that. It was, ooh, that's what we were saying. We weren't <laughs> booing him. But, uh, well, so he really, so he's not going to be running much, huh? He wants to build that shop, doesn't he? Um. Well, I don't know what's going to happen with the shop. Uh, we're, we've hit some snafus with the land purchase, and uh, he's still working on some things there. Um, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Uh, we did buy a 450, um, so we we are in the midst of uh, considering building a, an open cart now uh, because we have a 450. Ooh. So there's a there's a lot on the table right now. Um, he's gonna have to drop a few classes if we're gonna take that challenge on. So mm-hmm. um, I'm not. It's not gonna happen this winter. I can tell you that for sure because we're uh, we're licking our wounds and paying for some stuff. So once we get uh, over the hump and some things paid for, um, we're hoping by next summer to have something put together. And uh, and out into the open class, but uh, again, uh, no no promises just yet. Yep. Oh, down at NorCal too. I got the the stuff for their uh, clones. Well, there, there wasn't a whole bunch of them, but there was more clones than there was UAS. There was only three UAS: Ron Bowles, Renee Angel, and Ryan Diotti. The Hitman wins it. Uh, Bowles. I don't know. Something must have happened to Angel because she took the heat race, but Bowles got by her in the main event, so he wins that. Uh, the clones. Uh, Scott Morgan. Third, Derek Wallace, second, and Kevin Bridges. This is for you, Ryan Fernandez. <laughs> I watched that race. Dude. And that's what I kept thinking every time that guy got his name called. Yeah, but you know, I was looking at while we're waiting for Chance Crum to call. You know, here it is: fifty-six competitors in this Northwest Ford Focus series. Um, I counted them, the ones that were that were listed. Um, Nick Evans, your leader. The I, I, his nickname's the Piston. Tyler, the uh, Tanner, is it? Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, no, it's Eric Turner. And then it's uh, uh, Tristan Thomas, Chance Crum, Ryan Colley, Jacob Brown. Uh, let's see here. Thomas Walker, Renee Angel, Michael Inglebright, and uh, Garrett Thomas. Now, I don't know if those are actually... It didn't really say. It just said the points, the stand, you know. So I'm, I'm hoping I got those close. But anyway, those are the two that are going at it: Turner and Evans, two points. And uh, we're gonna get. Uh, we got our guest here on the phone, so we're gonna get things. We're gonna get things started. Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for in the seat. Powered by Blue Line Graphics. Been watching this guy for a long time since he was a little kid. I won't tell what you know his dad had to do at the track, but he was that little. And uh, he's a, just an accomplished quarter midget racer, and it looks like he's well on his way to being the same thing up here in the uh, open wheel ranks. Give it up, everybody, for Mr. Chance Crump. Thanks for being on the show, Chance. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, man. So uh, your season, the checkers are going to fly and this weekend, and it's kind of bittersweet, right? It's like the last day of school. You can't wait to get out of there, but yet you're kind of sad in a way, right? But not that. Yeah, it's definitely been a, a great season. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, definitely sad it's coming to an end. Uh, you know, we'd like to do some more racing you know, all year round, but uh, got to focus on school now. Yeah. So, so, uh, so looking at that, uh, how'd the season go and, and did it go like you had hoped or or did it go better or tell us about it yeah i mean we got a, uh, a win last weekend that made win number 13 for the season and I, I really couldn't ask for more than that uh it's it definitely way better than i expected you know the goals for this season were just to you know try to be fast and everything we raced and just you know be up front and uh with that you know the wins came so it was definitely a lot of fun uh, we got to travel to a bunch of different tracks and ride a bunch of different cars, and so you uh, really can't ask for more than that. No, you can't. You know, and I think that makes a guy a, a better racer. I mean, it's cool, and, and if that's all you can do is just one track, that's great, but I think it really broadens your horizons when you can run some different racetracks. 
Don't yeah, you I th- love racing at different tracks. Uh, you know, you go there and you're able to apply your driving skills uh, in, in different ways and, and, and learn different things. And so it, you definitely get better. Uh, and then with that as well, driving the different cars, you know, winged versus non-winged and, and things like that. Uh, right. You really learn a lot from it. So, so you and your team feel at least, you know, you got one more to go, but I mean, for 95% of it's done. You guys are, you guys are content with the way the season went? Yeah. I mean, you always, you know, like to get more and we had some, some close ones uh, that, that weren't able to get W's um, and we, we came up just short in the, the Deming championship. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, it's gone, you know, way more than uh, it's been way better than we expected. So uh, mm. it's, it's definitely a happy ending to the season. Man, that's you know, isn't that great when you can? Well, we got one to go, so I'm not even going to say anything because I don't want to jinx it, right? You, but um, are are you looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm currently at UW right now, so really looking forward to going back to the racetrack. Oh, uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, really close points battle between Eric Turner and, and uh, Nick Evans, so that'll be cool to be a part of. Um, mm. It's going to be some fun racing, always uh, some uh, close battles at Elma. Right. So now, so now, now I had you looking at the thing, and I, I hope I got the right one, but I had you, you're sitting fourth right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So are you mathematically out of it? Can, can, I mean, can you, could you get, uh, uh, Tristan Thomas maybe, or is, is the differential just too much? It's, it's pretty much, uh, we're pretty much out of it. Uh, we've missed, I think, three races this season because mm-hmm. of other conflicts. Right. Uh, with school and other races. Yep. And so, yeah, it just kind of put us out of it. Um, but uh, we're close, you know, definitely satisfied with the top five. Yeah, for sure, man. God. I mean, and, and this is your first season. Is, is, is Am I correct in that assumption? Uh, it's my first full season with the, the okay. Midget Series. Uh, I've had the past two seasons, I did a, a few races with them. Right. But, yeah, man, for shoot, for just jumping in there like that, man, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. So, you know, my my other question for you is, okay, so oval tracking, right? It's oval track. We're going left. The the theory, a lot of the theories are the same. I mean, they're different because the cars are different, but for the most part, the the routine's the same, and and you get what I mean. So, what is the draw? What is the draw for Chance Crumb? What makes what makes open wheel so you know? good for you i mean what 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 is it that that draws you to that versus say a late model or a modified or whatever uh well you know my, my transition to open wheel uh well i guess i've always ran open wheel even with core midgets but the transition to dirt racing uh here in the northwest was just you know what, what was easiest at the time but you know we've really fallen in love with it uh, it's just the, the close quarter racing uh, and on, on dirt especially, it's just, you know, you're always slightly out of control the entire time. Mm-hmm. And it uh, really makes for some exciting racing. That's awesome. So so you don't really think it's a matter of, um, you know, it's just so it's it, it's not the car, it's not the track, it's just a combination of everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really fun sport. I mean, I love all racing, you know, and I would love to, you know, eventually try everything if I could, so, you know, if that was possible. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun and there's really not anything like it, man. That's, that's so cool. That is so cool. Well, and lastly, um, we, we, uh, you've been through the whole season. You've had ups, you've had downs, you've had breaks, you've had wins. Um, that series is looking to be, I mean, it's strong. It's one of the strongest ones here in the, in the Northwest without a doubt. Um, but if there was, for all the good it is, and I'm not looking for the bad, but I'm just saying, if you could change one thing about the series, uh, and maybe there's nothing, I don't know, but if you could change one thing about the series, what would it be? Uh, you know, I, I honestly just wish there was more tracks here in the Northwest. You know, I mean, they've really made the most out of what we've got to work with. Um, Galen and Carl have done such an awesome job. You know, like the, the first race of the season at Elma, we had, you know, over 30 cars. And it was, you know, really surprising. And it's, the series has grown so much, and it's, it's so strong, and there's a, you know, real family environment to it. And the racing's great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I mean, the series goes to so many different tracks already. Uh, you know, Skagit, Elma, Deming, uh, Cottage Grove. You know, it, all the ones in Oregon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's there's really not much more you can do. I just think it's going to, you know, continue to grow with more people realizing, you know, how good the racing is. People start to watch it more and get interested and uh 
start to you know build the field count even more. Right on. And and, and your plans for twenty seventeen? Uh, don't have any firm plans yet. I know for sure I'm going to be racing a 600 at Deming and uh, midget in the Northwest Focus Midget Series. Just not sure how much yet. Um, and, and that's down that in Salem, right? What we can, what's that? Well, you're going to be down in Salem. Are you going to be doing any of that? Uh, possibly. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll, uh, I mean, it would be cool to do uh, get one of the cage cards going or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, well, I heard the series was going thing. there. That's what I thought. Weren't they going to run a few races down at the indoor? That's just what I was told. Maybe I heard wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think around Thanksgiving, there's going to be a midget race down there mm-hmm. uh, at, at Salem. I think it's the 26th. That's so that, awesome. That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, and then next year, yeah, it just depends what I can figure out. Um, hoping to get into a sprint car a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Uh, nice. And then maybe do a little bit of traveling in the 600 and go hit some big races in the Midwest and stuff. But. Yeah, definitely looking forward to next year, but, uh, yeah, kind of sad to finish this year, though. Yeah. You know what, man? You're, you're, uh, you're a stud. You're, 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 you, you've got, you, you're articulate, you, you, you're just, uh, you're dialed, man. You're going to go places, I think. I mean, um, boy, I got, I'm going to have to go up and shake your head and all the, all those whippings your dad used to give you, they, they, they they've worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. No, that. seriously, yeah. My, yeah. My my dad's done you know an awesome job. I mean he he puts so much hard work into giving these awesome opportunities, uh, and and we just have so much fun racing together. So it's it's really cool to have some success this year. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, all said and done, win, lose, or draw, that's that's more important than anything. So that's something you're gonna exactly. have for us your life. So so I got a couple couple of questions for you, Chase. It's it's Lippy. I believe we met on the show up at Joe's uh, Racing. You were there, correct? Yep. Okay, so uh, do you do you drive somebody else's focus, or is it your guys's focus that you drive? I, I'm I was just curious on on how that works. Are you a hired uh, so gun? The, the midget is owned by by Galen and Carla, but we keep it at our house and maintain it. Okay, uh, they let it, uh, let us run it. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. Uh, you know, I, I love racing that car and. Uh, it, it's it's cool to have that and the 600 to, to work on during the week. <laughs> that, that definitely is cool. So uh, is the 600 uh, theirs also? No, the 600's ours. That's our uh, trail framework car. Um, and yeah, the, the the midget we maintain, but it's uh, they own that. And then also this year, race the uh, 1200 for Brock Lemley up at Deming. Nice. So, see, that's a that's a real con- uh, tribute to your your driving. I mean, it's it's everybody thinks it has wheels and a steering wheel. It's all the same. It's easy to drive, and it's it's really not. They're they're very different, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, you know, even just between the six hundred and the twelve hundred, which you know looks similar, but they drive totally different. Uh, so, yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's it's, it's really cool to jump in the different cars and. Uh, kind of figure out the differences and be able to apply, you know, different driving skills to them. Right. Yeah, definitely. But it's also, I mean, each car has their own quirks, their own things. I, I know that uh, uh, my nephew races quite a few different go-karts that we have, different motor combinations, that kind of stuff. But we ended up having to go through and put all the same seats and everything because it was just too hard to go from one seat to another seat to another seat. It just uh, really threw his driving style off. I don't imagine you get that pleasure with uh, the different ones you got. So it must be uh, quite challenging going from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle. Yeah, uh, I think the best example of that would just be a Deming uh, when we did three cars, you know, running the, the midget race and the 1200 race and the 600 race all back to back to back. Oh, uh, and, and they're all so different. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, not really the same seat, but uh, they're definitely different. But it, it's a lot of fun, you know, it's, you know, definitely takes a couple laps to get used to a different car once you get in it. But uh, for once sure. you get the feel for it, you kind of remember what you're doing. Well, yeah. Once once the flag flies, it it all goes away after that. It's just all instinct that takes over. But that is that's pretty uh, pretty amazing that you're able to do that and uh, come up with good finishes. And uh, our co-host also said you made it down to California and did quite well down there. Were you just a hired gun that that went down and drove some other people's stuff there as well? Uh, no, that was our own 600. We we brought that down. Oh, okay. Um, and we went, the, went with our friends the Hammer. So that, that was cool to go down there and kind of show, you know, 
cars that are that are good at Deming could be good down there against all the uh, big California names down there. So that, that, was, that was a cool event. Was that your first trip down there as well? Uh, no, we've had a few trips down there. Um, I think that was my second time racing that track at Plaza Park. Nice. See, that's that's also, you know, something that uh, a lot of people just take for granted uh, that, you know, you keep going to the same track. You, you're always fast, but, uh, you know, you, you move around like that and all dirt's different. You know, all sizes are different. Turns are different. Everything's different. And just being able to adapt to all that as quickly as you do is is pretty amazing. Terry, Terry's right. You you got a good future coming with this if you stick with it. But uh, on the second note, uh, I believe you said you were going to WSU and don't give up on the education, man. Oh, those uh, are fighting words. When when you can... Uh, <laughs> yeah, those are fighting words. When you uh, can't fall back on the uh, on the learning, then you're in trouble because we can't drive forever. So just stick with the learning and and pick up a good uh, a good trade. I would check your car for bombs when you leave here. <laughs> it's U Dub. I U Dub. Sorry. Well, nah, chance. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being on the show, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you this weekend. I think I'm still calling. That. I'm supposed to be calling this last one. So, um, Bert Johnson, if you're listening, give me a shout out. But uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll see you, and uh, that'll be kind of cool to call the race. But go hit them books, man. Yeah, don't give up on that. Uh, yeah, we're going to have studying. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Definitely everyone come down and watch the uh, midget finale at Elma. It's going to be a good race. Sure is. We'll it's, talk to you soon, man. If it's not, it's going to be a good right, party in the pits. Good. All right, brother. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, we've got Chance Crumb all done. Great kid. we got Renee Angel coming up. We've got uh, some mindset tips. We've got some lapping with Lippy. We've got some tips for you beginners from our main man, Steve Miller. And uh, we'll be back just right after this. Hey, racers. Glenn Tower here from the Northwest Race Report. You know, with the invention of the Internet, our local go-kart shops have really taken a huge blow. One of the great go-kart shops out there is O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies. They offer a great selection of carts, parts, and service. We all want to win, and O'Hagan's wants to help. O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, Lebanon, Oregon. You know, and I also want to give a big shout out to uh, BLG Blue Line Graphics, uh, South Sound or South Bay Automotive, rather, and uh, Creative Inc. You can check them out. They've got T-shirts. They've got all kinds of cool stuff. They made our NWR hats, our polo shirts. Uh, Creative Inc. One dot com. And here's our second guest. <laughs> Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. Well, I'm just here to tell you, Lip. I mean, <clears throat> if you don't know, if you're into racing at all and you don't know who this woman is, um, I, I don't know. She, it, it's almost like being uh, the token black. There's not too many. I mean, there's more than than there maybe are are, are me there, but. Uh, She's awesome. She's one of the best racers in the country. She's touched a little bit of everything, stock cars, karting, cage carts, uh, now the Northwest Ford Focus Midget Series. Um, she's smart. She can wheel. She's Renee Angel. Thanks for being on, Renee. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. You bet. So, I mean, you know what? I, I I was starting to think, you know, I, I, I probably wouldn't recognize Renee. It's been so long since I've seen you. Was it February? I know, right? It, it was just like, wow, what? And and so uh, I said, I've been shunned. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so how are things been going? How's this? You you guys have you guys have had a busy year. Very busy. We had uh, one weekend off that we actually uh, did something non racing related. Uh, every other weekend since uh, first weekend of april we've been racing something wow let me guess that was, was it golf no actually we went to ocean shores <laughs> oh wow yeah so he tried to get a little romantic on you huh well not really oh okay <laughs> well he is a pimp so we keep that in mind well yeah so uh well let's talk about the the focus midget series right now because that uh this is 
No, I can't remember. Is this is that actually your second? Because I know your collarbone broke, so you can't. But is this technically your second or third? So this would technically be my first full year. Mm -hmm. um, I've run one for three seasons in the past. Okay. I've run like eight to ten races, and that's it. Wow. Um, Lance drove the one year where I had the, uh, well, see, I broke my collarbone, um, second race the one year, and then Lance drove for me the following year, so. Wow. Man, you just, you just dip, you know, uh, folks, we're talking to Renee Angel, if you're just joining in, she's our Blue Line Graphics in the seat guest. Um, she does UAS carts, which are no joke. She does cage carts, which we know are no joke. Um, she's done a little bit of asphalt stuff. She's been uh, the crew chief for the year in the Northwest Tour and the late models on asphalt. I mean, um, talk about some credentials. Good grief. <laughs> Has that helped you over all this time? I mean, that's it, got to make you pretty well-rounded. Well, it was funny. When I went to college, it was my my whole goal was to get a job with one of the big three, and then I realized I didn't want to do that every day in my life. And, and But just having the mechanical and the mathematical and the scientific background um, has helped tremendously. I mean, I've, I've worked with Gannon to design and, and build my own cart chassis and just the physics of how to set up a midget and the late model. Um, I'm doing my own carbon fiber now. I build my own motors. I mean, the, the education has been invaluable. Wow. So we're going to have to start calling her Renee Snow now. No. <laughs> She's not afraid to get her hands dirty. No. And, you know, and that's, that, and that's cool. I mean, well, Lippy, I, I think we could probably both relate. I mean, you're a little bit... I mean, I'm not going to say better, but it's just a little bit different for you. But who, I mean, with the passion we have for that, that that's, that is that is a good deal, right? That she's into it and loves to go wrenching and racing. and. No, oh, yeah, that's definitely what uh, keeps her and Shane together for sure because they both enjoy all the same stuff. So it's, uh, it's much easier to keep a relationship going when, uh, you know, you all enjoy the same things and, and enjoy going to the same places and doing the same things. It, it just makes it all that much better. And uh, you can just uh, see the smile on either one of their faces when they're at the track. They're having a good time, win, lose, or draw. They definitely like to win, but they're not afraid to uh, come in second either. So, Well, all I can say is just uh, if you think Shane isn't caring about the time you're thinking that and somebody does – tries to get a little stupid um he lets it he you know real quick who his racer is and there's no two ways about it so <laughs> he's a good guy he is a great guy he's my boy but um so you're sitting eighth is is that where you thought you'd be sitting this time going into elma actually my only real goal this year was to make uh, every A main and I have done that except for uh at dirt Cup. I missed it by one spot Wow. You know, uh, it, 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 it appears to me, I mean, I don't I don't hear a lot of, you know, I mean, you, you know, the scuttlebug on Facebook and this and that. But, you know, you you watch all these guys have had, 30, you know, I, I counted 56 have competed, actually. Right. Just over the over the season. But um, I don't hear a lot of griping or or or. Uh, anything. So that, that's that got to be either, one, a testament to all the drivers, and two, a testament to Galen and uh, Carla for just covering all their bases. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's like we're one big happy family when we're at the racetrack. If somebody has a problem, everybody pitches in. They lend each other parts. Um, I can go ask anybody a question, and I'll get a straightforward answer. I mean, it's just it's we're just like a big family. Now, what do you get to win? Is there is, uh, I don't, you know, I know there's a little bit of a purse. Is there not? Yeah, I think it's well. It depends on which track it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, payout's different than right. Gadget and Grace Harbor, but I, I think it's like four or five hundred to win. Um, and like everybody in the A main gets eighty bucks. Yeah. So right, win, lose, or draw, which one? You know, and you know, like I do. Nobody around here races for the money. Exactly. I mean, if you are, you got... You're in the wrong yeah, business. Yeah, you better go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I just have to I just have to say I, I follow you on Facebook and and uh, each and every time you finish up a focus weekend, it's uh, it's usually jovial. You, you had a good time, but you always add in that you learned something. And that's to me, that's the biggest thing. Uh, eventually, you're you're not going to be learning. And, and that's when the winning starts. So, you know, as long as you're still learning and getting better for me, I mean, it's a it's a win on a weekend whenever you come away with a whole piece that isn't wadded up and, and you learn something. So, so it uh, it sounds to me like you're having a really great time with the class, and it seems like a good class. Yeah, definitely. And that's one of the the reasons why we we kind of branched away from the kart racing is um, I I kind of got to a stagnant point where I really wasn't learning anything, and then, you know the kart count got so low, and it's like I needed a new challenge. Mm-hmm. And adding uh, the component of suspension uh, <laughs> to the race vehicle kind of threw a big monkey wrench into it and i i still have issues with um i almost get car sick if uh if the suspension moves too far oh so i have that to deal with and i've kind of um with doing my own setup have figured out how to make the car feel the way i want it to feel and need it to feel to be able to work that i can deal with that and go forward wow you, well, you, you just said something that I had on, on my list, but never mind. Go ahead, Lip. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive, though. I mean, because if, if everybody thinks about it, you know, the the UAS carts that you run are totally different than, than the midgets. And trying to get them to a point where they feel the same so you're comfortable in there, I mean... Wow, I don't think that there's a lot of people out there that have actually gone at it with that angle, and uh, so that's uh, that's pretty impressive that you're actually getting it to to do that for you and and uh, getting results with it. So that's freaking that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because until I until I figured that out, it was like I just I'd be terrified when I'd be out there because I couldn't feel what the car was doing, and I'd spin out or I'd end up upside down and. And now that I've kind of figured out how to crutch it, I'm actually having to learn how to race now. <laughs> so, and, uh, well, well, it might have been crutched before. Maybe you've just dialed it. Um, I worked a lot with this uh, shock settings mm-hmm. and and getting the springs so it the car wants to set a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, when Lance drove, we had a completely different setup in the car and we when uh i started driving again we tried that setup and it didn't work at all so junk so right I to, so i had to figure it out well, well let me ask you are, are you are you one of those um are you a uh straight and square true to the world uh person or are you a uh oh i'll put a you know spring-loaded right rear trailing arm on it and i'll go with the uh, you know the easy up and the uh this that and the other thing are you are you uh more of a straight up dead square kind of girl um pretty much uh like as far as cars and springs and shocks i've probably got the exact same that probably 90 percent of the cars have out there it's just they're they're adjusted slightly different Mm mm-hmm I think I think she has a different style than than most people has because of her background. And I'm just going out on a limb here, but I think you you feel more in the actual seat of your pants than than most people do. They they take it down and throw it into the corner and hope for the best. And I think when you come down there and throw it from the time that you throw it, you know, you're you're feeling everything and analyzing everything where a lot of people are just along for the ride because they don't know what they're feeling. So to them, it just feels loose and woohoo. And to you, I think you're trying to analyze it all the way in and all the way out because that's the way your mind works. And it, it makes it for a lot more challenging when you're that intelligent that you keep on top of everything that's happening and sometimes it's a hindrance but once you get a handle on it it's a really big help so that's probably i'm just guessing that was probably a lot of your problem until you got it down to uh being able to analyze everything that you were taking in is that a pretty good assumption exactly um 
when we go to the tracks where it's really, really slick and you've got to be a little more precise on setting the thing in the corner, um, I tend to uh, excel there because that's pretty much the way you drive a UAS cart. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not completely backed into the corner. Um, you more drive it in on the right front and rotate the car that way. Right. Um, but like Skagit and Grace Harbor, it's more of a momentum thing, and, and the freer you can keep the car and 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 uh, keep your foot down, the better off you are there. And I have a tendency to struggle there because I can't do that. I, I'm with you. In my 10 years in dirt, I, and I came to this conclusion long ago, is that my personal opinion is it – when you get it right or or really, really close, that thing should want to, when you get into the corner, that thing should want to rotate on its own. You shouldn't have to be stomping the brake or, or, you know, I mean, you do that if it's not right. But, I mean, if it's really close, uh, that was always my, my thing. I mean, that was what I shot for was, hey, this thing needs to want, if you turn in there, it should just automatically want to start rotating if it's right or close. Yeah. But. I yeah, could be exactly. all that. I mean, the cage carts are like that. If they are right, you can drive them with one hand. If they're not right, you can't make 10 laps without feeling like your arms are going to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so we, we've concluded that you're happy with this. Your goal is just to make all the A's. You've done that. Um, what's – is it – I mean, now you've done some late model stuff, so I can't really say it, but is there – you know, we're oval racers. Midget stock cars. I mean, we're still going left. Uh, what What do you think draws? What What makes one guy like late models and, and one guy like sprint cars? I mean, is it the dirt asphalt thing, or is it is it the car? Or I mean, because we are going left. I think, at least for me, the asphalt stuff takes a lot of um, people power. As far as, you know, like the late model stuff goes, I mean, the maintenance and the cost is um, can be outrageous. Toward the dirt stuff, um, depending upon what track you're at, I mean, I bought six tires at the beginning of the year. I bought two more um, a couple weeks ago, and maintenance is minimal. As long as you don't tear the car up on a weekly basis, it's um, pretty cheap. Yeah, that's awesome. So now, with the season being what it is, um, you have been the gamut. You've ran the series. It's strong. It's probably the strongest thing we got going around here as far as continually to grow and the numbers that it's got. If there was one thing you could change about it, though, is there anything? Or would you say they're pretty well, they've got their bases covered? I kind of agree with Chance. I like more tracks around here. Um, you know, we do do some traveling to Oregon, um, but I'd like to see. There's, I know there's a couple more in Oregon that I'd like to go to. Some of, the, and I like the smaller tracks um, where it's a little more technical. Um, but yeah, I like it. They've got a pretty good thing going right now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the changes that I make would be very, very minimal. Well, what do you attribute that to? Why? I mean, because I mean, I think s some promoters need to be taking heed here. Because I mean, I, you know, like I said, we don't hear any drama on Facebook. I, I, I don't see any, you know, BS in any of the write ups about you know so and so went and jumped. In the, you know, even when Shane went did his little uh, you know gymnastics deal there, he he was angry, but I mean, you know, he he kept it. You know, it was one of them deals. So. What do you attribute that to? Is it just the kind of people they are, or is it, is it, or is there some foundation there that people aren't seeing? I think it's kind of a combination of, of the people that, that run the class. Um, they're a little more laid back. There's some of uh, the competitors are using it as a stepping stone. Some of us are just there because we like the race and it's affordable. Um, Galen kind of keeps everybody in line as far as um, – motor maintenance goes he he tells us to you know prepare for this prepare for that make sure you buy your tires ahead of time he's just a really good uh leader carla she does you know same thing she's always getting us info if we ask questions um, it just makes it easier for us to just show up at the racetrack and get in our cars and race now who are the big are there are there some chassis manufacturers that are big in this thing or or is there one two three or is it just kind of a, a scatter of a bunch of them uh, pretty much a 
scatter a bunch of them. Um, there's probably, I'd say, uh, a good showing of triple uh, X cars, um, only because they're local and they're good. And if you need one fixed, <laughs> you can just take it up to Burlington and have them fix it. <laughs> uh, like Shane's car was an old, I wouldn't even guess what year, probably mid 90s car. I mean, essentially, the mounting points for all the suspensions the same, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, and the the Stewarts obviously have a big part in um, in the series and keeping it going and, and, and also making everybody happy. Um, uh, do you see yourself staying in it? Uh, and is it just because of cart count? And, uh, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's a fun class and, and there's plenty of racing. Is, is that what's going to keep you in there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've thought about a 360 before. Um, I've ridden in Jimmy Phillips two seater 410 and there's no way physically that I could ever do that myself. Um, so, I mean, this is the next logical thing I can do. Um, I, I definitely do like hopping back and forth between the Cape cart and the UAS cart or the Yamaha or whatever and the midget because it just kind of keeps you on your toes uh, mentally and physically. It definitely, I agree with that. Uh, you know, any any time you go from something that that where everything's happening so fast into something where it's not happening so fast, it's it's always so much of a pleasure to drive that, and uh, it, it's just uh, remarkable how much fun you have uh, when it's all not happening so fast. Uh, Having said yeah. all that, what what's what, what can we expect from you for this winter? Uh, I know you're getting the the UAS cart back out. You've ran a clone in the past. The clone classes have gone away. Uh, you've you've ran Yamaha. Uh, I know you like the clone class. So are you leaning towards the 206? What what can we expect from you for this winter? Um, before we go to Phoenix, um, I'll run the UAS cart once make sure everything's okay there um i've got a couple motors to get ready for um the super shock heavy class and the arizona open class um i got a kt that i need to break in um that's about it as far as carts go um i'm going to run the first weekend of november the two-day cage cart show the big race they have there yeah that's the fifth and um, sixth yep Yep, yep. Um, and then once Phoenix over is over, um, it's back to the UAS cart, getting everything ready for uh, DK. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, are you going to be uh, you, the uh, the Superstock class? That's a hundred cc, and that's your Reed jets, correct? Correct. And are you going to be taking those down to Salem to run down there to break them in and and run that? Yeah, I'll run um, probably the second race with the Reed Jet, and then my Arizona Open uh, November 13th to go to Vegas. I got a half marathon to run. Nice. Um, but the weekend, or the I think it's the December race, I'll run uh, my Arizona Open motor. Yeah, that's on that cool gold and yellow and kind of maroon colored ride you had, right? Correct. Yeah, that's that's probably one of my favorite color combinations of yours, for sure. So would that be the the third you're planning on December third? You're planning on taking that down? Um, I think so. Because I, I got my uh, m my uh, my little uh, four stroke small block that uh, we usually run in the sportsman class and i never get anybody to run with down there so i might try and make that trip down there and uh mix it up with you on that weekend i know i probably won't have anything for you but it'll be fun trying cool yeah awesome i'll have to keep that one in mind well renee i hope i see you this weekend are you going to be there I will be there, assuming it's not raining. Yeah, I can't wait to see my. Uh, wait a minute, you're not going if it's my raining. My uncle. Isn't well, it? Isn't it just a party in the pits when it rains? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> She's got too much to do. I she can said, hear it in her if voice. You, if you did that as much as I have all summer long, <laughs> <laughs> she's probably halfway praying for some rain. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just no, don't no, have to I, do another one. I just changed 
like three things that I, I really want to see if they work. So She's praying for no rain. Well, maybe a little bit. Get the track sticky and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, do me a favor and, and give my uh, my brother Shane a hug. I miss him, man, because we always talk at the track. He's just wonderful to talk to. So I'm looking forward to maybe hooking up with him this weekend. Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. He's a busy man. Renee, thank you. Yep. You're uh, awesome. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. You're way better than uh, anybody gives you credit for. I do know that. <laughs> Thanks. You bet. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you this weekend. All righty. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Renee Angel, I, you know, like her, don't like her, whatever. She is tough. She's smart. She's a cool chick. She's one of my faves, w- w- without a doubt. She's good at what she does. There's no doubt about that. She And she does it all. So, yeah. Definitely. Steve Miller, you've been sitting there like a perfect pupil. <laughs> right in the front row, you haven't said a peep. <laughs> Your eyes have been glued forward. My goodness, <laughs> you must have been one whale of a student. Oh, yeah, maybe. When I, when I, uh, when I tried in school, uh, sometimes I didn't always put my best effort. You, you, oh, yeah? And, uh, boy, I'm wondering, is your mic on? I hope it is. Wait. It was on. Did we turn him down? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. Test, test, test. Right. test. How's that? Are you there now? I don't know. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Which one is he on? I got so many cables on this thing, I, I, I don't even know. So, <laughs> Is there a switch underneath there? It should be a switch underneath that. Yeah, I do too. Tap on it. Just lightly tap on the top of it. I know, right? Jeez, what is going on here? Plug that one in. Now, let's see what happens. So, while Lippy's taking care of that, we'll see uh, what's up. Uh, what are you? Test, 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 test. What is going on? All right. We're going to, uh, I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here. Don't go anywhere, folks. Hey, racers, Glenn Tower here from the Northwest Race Report. You know, with the invention of the Internet, our local go-kart shops have really taken a huge blow. One of the great go-kart shops out there is O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies. They offer a great selection of carts, parts, and service. We all want to win, and O'Hagan's wants to help. O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, Lebanon, Oregon. All right, we are back. Good folks at O'Hagan's, they're pretty awesome. So, Lippy, we got about 15 minutes before we let these good folks go. So, S- Steve Miller, we're, we're going we're gonna to blend you in on this. So, I want you to just jump in when there's something that maybe uh, catches your mind. So, I was sitting here thinking, you look at everything, right? And, and, and some people are having great success. Other people are like, you know, oh, my goodness. Oh, my. So, I'm just sitting here going, okay, here, here is the, what is the number one thing? Uh, you know, you're new, you get in there. Faust says this all the time. For the first little bit, just go drive your go-kart. Don't worry about what pipes on it, what what motor you got, what tire. You know, don't get caught up in all that stuff. Just go drive your go-kart, right? 95% of your problems or questions are going to be answered in that, in that span of time when you just go and drive it. You're not worried about how fast you are. I mean, you're trying to be fast, but you're not worried about winning, right? You're not going to... It's very rare that somebody comes in and cleans up, you know, but... Just go drive your go-kart and, and and commit to learning the basics because everything is based on those things. Doesn't do a damn bit of good to go get, you know, the pipe of the week, clutch of the week. You don't know how to do it anyway. You don't know what you're doing with it. So master the basics. Everybody's had to. And, and the ones that are good. See, here's the problem. Everybody's paid those dues, right, Lip? Mm-hmm. But when you're new... All you see are the guys that have already paid them. So it makes it 
it's it's tempting to want to just be like them. I mean, because you're new and, and, and you haven't seen them go go through the uh, the deal and, and make all your changes. Exhaust everything. Don't say you need this until you've moved and pretty much shuffled every washer and spacer there is in any kind of different configuration on the go-kart. That, that should take you a heck of a long time right there. <laughs> it does. Right? Moving hubs in a half inch at a time or a quarter inch at a time and finding out what it is on the scales and how, what it does. And I mean, you got some time before you're ready to, to, to really uh, you know, progress. Prioritize what's important and uh, always prove to yourself what a change does. I, I just, you know, I, I, it's crazy how... Um, I was like, God, you think I should change? I mean, I did this before. You think I should change it? Uh, I'm thinking about doing it. Well, uh, you know, so somebody says something, just maybe a little bit that doesn't confirm it. If if you're thinking about it, go change it and go try it. As long as you know how to get back to where you're at, you're fine. And that goes back to Lippy's thing of notes, notes, notes. And if you've done that, it should be no problem. But you need to prove to yourself what it changes. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. You know, it makes it free. It only does. Okay, well, you don't know until you go do it. I mean, you just don't. So prove to yourself uh, what a change does. Um, Number three, you, uh, and this is pretty simple. I I mean, truthfully, it probably should have went back to the beginning, but I think you have to analyze what you want out of it. Where are you going? I mean, are you going full blown? Okay, I, I'm gonna win, you know, or are you just gonna be a recreational? I, I want to be fast, but I want to go. I think that is the important baseline you need to have: is how serious am I gonna be? Right? Am I gonna be like uh, lippy and 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 keep my composure and my thing until I get home, and then just absolutely destroy my garage <laughs> or you know what i mean or 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 are we gonna um just say you know oh well i just like it because of the people and we're gonna be. either way is fine but you need to you need to set that so you don't go in there thinking you know you want uh you want caviar results on a on a on a you know potato salad budget right <laughs> or effort um oh this one's my peeve Take some pride in your equipment. Well, I mean, if, it, if it looks good, you're you're gonna feel good about it. I mean, oh, uh, wow! I, you know, isn't that the truth? It's just like the studio. Well, why did you do all that? Because I wanted it to feel like a studio, right? <laughs> yep. I, I know a lot of times I've uh, just been cleaning my stuff up and realized stuff that was going on with the cart that I wouldn't have known unless I. You know, was going through it. There you have it. Lippy. Hallelujah, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, th- that's the thing. That's how you find cracks in the frame and, and you know. Loose bolts. Right. And missing and, bolts. And your yeah. eyes aren't as big as saucers when somebody says, oh, yeah, and you can't figure out why, you know, the cart goes 10 feet and then drops because your your frame's cracked and it's dragging the. I'm telling you, folks, I know you, you, you sounded like a broken record, but um, I even see it from some of the good guys. Oh, yeah. So, you're spending big money on it, by the way, too. I mean, um, jeez, I don't know. That'd be like taking your wife's wedding ring, these, you know what I mean? And and you just wouldn't do it. Everything performs better if it's clean. I don't know why it just does. And I've named that not Murphy's Law, but Midas Law, right? Because if it's clean, tight, and right, you're going to be like King Midas. Everything you touch... For the most part, it's going to be uh, golden. Your day is going to be smoking. Um, let's see here. Not only that, but a clean ride gives you a, a reputation. It, it, it gives you some respect. Um, when you're new, it's all smoke and mirrors, isn't it? <laughs> if, if you can, if you can make them think you're fast when you roll in, <laughs> even though you might not be, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Right? Intimidation. Wow. They look fast. They are fast. I, I wonder how many people said that when, well, I mean, he is everywhere, but I could just imagine when Chase pulled in there and they pulled that. 
you know, that beast out of there, that the, black. The Batmobile. Jeez. Who, hey, you, who is? Oh, yeah, we know what it is. <laughs> it's fast. And, 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 yes, it is fast. <laughs> Just wait. We can't describe it. You got to see it. Um, Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and to go along with that, just because you're a beginner doesn't mean your stuff has to be messy. We're, you're not like a little kid, right, sitting in a high chair where you got your Gerber stuff all over your, you know, this. You don't have to be messy just because you're a beginner. And, and you don't have to be, it doesn't take any mechanical skill, really. It just takes some elbow grease and uh, I- effort. Just get familiar with your, you know, with your cart and your stuff. I mean, uh, if you're never cleaning it up, you know, you miss a lot of stuff. Yeah. On it. You Definitely. Know that was a good point, though, being familiar with it, uh, knowing knowing what's there and what's not there. You know, I mean, it, it makes a big difference. So it's it's all a part about learning what you got. Right. It's pride. It's not money. And uh, but it does take some effort. And if you can't even put in enough effort for that, how are you going to be ready for that good, big, fancy, fast stuff? You know, the deal is, I'll tell you, and my grammar's going to be bad, you ain't. (laughs) Simple as that. And uh, seven, ain't nobody going to give you anything, right? So you you, you need to, you've got to make... You've got to get, you want to make every little, uh, it all counts, right, Lippy? I mean, I, I remember when a couple of years at Salem, I mean, I, I don't, I know you weren't a beginner, but I mean, I, I remember that back then to how you are now and good grief. Oh yeah. I mean, it's definitely a learning curve. It's, it's gotten better people wise because, you know, most people now will help you out or if you ask, they'll definitely help you out. So, you know, that's, that's been a big, big change in our sport over the last few years. That's really made a difference. Um, well, Steve, he's in his second year now. And this is this is the critical year for most beginners, most new people to our sport. If they're not getting the help and the nurture at this point right now, they're giving up because it's too hard for a new person to come in without any knowledge and go at it and be successful. So you at the second year, that's where a lot of people get discouraged mm-hmm. and just go away if they're not helped, if they're not, you know, nurtured along the way. It didn't take much with him. He's got a great support group with his family and the people that he races with and he's smart you know you you tell him once what his cart's doing and and he remembers that and he goes back to it and he he uses that through uh several of the carts that he has now because he's kind of like me he's 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 got a problem so Catching up. <laughs> well, definitely well, they they had him marked for suicide watch there for a while with that <laughs> yamaha because he he was he was kept venturing over to the edge of that cliff, and uh, there were several days where I thought, "Man, this guy is still here." <laughs> I thought he was going to kick it. I mean, to if, death. yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of us would have already jumped by then, right? Uh, we're, we're having a hard time with it, um, but uh, I guess it kind of makes it pay off, you know, a little bit better when it does start coming around. And um, uh, I, I still got a lot of stuff to learn with that, and mm-hmm. um, you know, hopefully, uh, if nothing else, it just gets better and. Uh, I mean, if not, now it's all we can do is stick with it and, you know, make the best of it. So, Well, and, and, and that's a lot of why you're here because throughout all that, I mean, I mean, because there's been days where you've only made, you know, one lap, the thing ran in the pits, and now it's time to go race, and it doesn't run, right? And, and so you're d- still got a smile on your face. I know you're not happy about it. You, you shouldn't be. I wouldn't be either. I, I'd have been jumping up and down <laughs> i'd have been like lippy i'd have been i wouldn't have waited till i got home i would have destroyed that stuff then right but uh, well like on that day that you're talking about when i only got to go out for uh you know one one uh racer right uh, and it was the main um at that time uh me and rusty were tied in points and he was the one over there with his spare motor you know hey let's let's put this on there i'm telling um, you I, I i can't say enough about that um and, you know, like how Lippy was talking earlier about, um, you know, people helping you out. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have any success in this if it wasn't for um, the support that I get from my family and uh, everyone in the pits, but also everyone that's around me in the pits. 
Um, I, I can't say enough about that. Um, it's I, definitely family. He's been bitten. Yeah, definitely, but in a good way for sure. Right. Uh, everybody, everybody does pitch in, and and he's done it as well as other people have helped him. So that's that's just what it's about. And and yeah, sometimes you gotta you gotta pull out the backup motor and and loan it out even to somebody that's you know right there in the hunt. It worked out great for him. He won the the yeah the stock animal class this year. He he deserved that. He's been putting his lumps in there. He's been coming in second. He's been coming in third. You know, and it all added up and worked out for him so i'm i'm very happy it's a uh, it's my favorite class i can't wait to get back into it i wish uh, more people got into it because i think it's a, a great class but he pulled it down this year he deserves the coat well i gotta tell you and i wasn't supposed to but i did over here the possession is nine tenths so <laughs> once he asked to borrow that thing you weren't getting it back oh he gave and that's what they discussed they said once we get that thing we got it right i mean well, I can't, I can't say enough about those motors, too, because uh, uh, Lippy's put every one of those together for me, and uh, uh, they run awesome. They run so. like Jake the Bear, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't get that one back, but I did get some Franklins for it. So. Oh, well, that hell, that's cool, then. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, and, and let's face it. We do have good people, because there's probably a lot of people, well, we could legitimately say maybe don't, even if they were struggling, but they probably don't deserve any help just because of the way they are, right? But. People tend to overlook that and still do it. So, yeah, it's good. I I definitely say um, for myself uh, going out um, to CKA and racing, um, it I thought it was going to be one thing when I got out there, and I was just blown away by um, the people. Um, mm -hmm. The I, I like the racing. It's it's awesome. Um, I'll make every race that I can. Uh, but I think the all the people there, the group as a whole, it, right. they just turn it into something even better. Um, it, it, it is. It's like a big get-together. It is. It, it, it's family. That's just the way I look at it, you know, and, and I've gone way out of my way for my family because that's uh, that's that's the way they it is and that's the way they are, you know. I, I respect everybody that races with us. I appreciate everybody that races with us. And mm -hmm. whether I was the leader of the show or or not doing any of what I do, I would still be that way because it, he's right. I, I do. I enjoy every single person that's there. There's just not a bad one in the bunch. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Oh, and I'll go through these last ones pretty quick. Discipline. You know, don't reward yourself until you've you've made the goal or or, or gotten where you and, and you got to stick to that. And the same goes in your driving. You know, just because you don't maybe know what to fix, then go the other way. Take the time, the discipline to learn and understand what it is you don't like. A lot of times, you maybe not might not have to know how to fix it. You just need to know what you don't like, and somebody can help you. Right? It's just when you throw your hands up and you go, "I don't know." It's just not. You know, I mean. You're not going to get anywhere if you can discipline yourself to be able to describe, you know, I don't like this because it's like this. I don't like this. Or I get sick. I get car sick if there's too much suspension travel, right? It's like mm -hmm. Renee said. Oh, let's see here. Um, set yourself up. Don't don't always go and look for what you did good. You already know what you do good. Go to the racetrack. Go to practice, whatever, and tell your your, your – uh, cohort or your uh you know who, what do they say when you gotta stay responsible what do they keep you uh, uh honest but there's a uh accountable oh and say hey you know what steve i'm gonna i'm doing this i don't i don't like a so today that's my weakness and i'm gonna work on that all day so i want you to just remind me if you see me not doing that or whatever or or ask me hey what did um boom and i better be able to tell you Right. When, when, when you ask, I mean, that's the only way you're going to defeat those bad habits or get over those fears. I mean, everybody's a little fearful of something and you just got to beat it. Right. I mean, mine was really loose in this car. Turn four, well, I'm, I'll never forget it. it. Scared me to death. I was just I don't know why it just did. And uh, it was it was tough to tough to be free there. It was just like, God. And, then, and so. Hence, I would slow way down too much because I was a little bit worried about it. But visualize. I know. You think Lippy's going, Chase. Visualize, guys. Picture what you want in your mind. I know it sounds crazy, 
But we're splitting hairs here. This is how we do it. And that's how the big guys do it. You got in order to get what you want, you got to see what you want, and, and you got to pretend you already have it. That's not what they tell you in the in, in, we're just stuff, right? Visualize the track, where you're going, how you're going to enter, how you're going to exit, and uh, lastly, worry about you. <laughs> well, right. Well, kind of like how you're talking about discipline um, uh, and worrying about you. Um, I know last year um, when I was having a hard time coming around and um, I know uh, on one race, uh, 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 Rusty lapped me mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I'm just going to fall in behind him and just try and see what he's doing and um, got in behind him and I basically followed him, but he went off the track and I was like so undisciplined and not worrying about me. I was so focused on him that I just went off the track with him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was somebody said, so if he jumped off a cliff, would you? I, well, yeah, yeah, I did it. <laughs> um, I just, I just knew he was fast, and uh, I was, I I was get trying, it. trying to pick up on anything that uh, that I could from him. But uh, if I would have been focusing more on what I was doing, I, you know, I might have. But, uh, but, but you know, man, the fact that you can sit here and admit that, and and, and that you noticed that, and. The other thing is, at least you were trying something, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, to sit there and get pounded week in and week out, you know, and, um, you know, it, it's like they always say, if, if if it doesn't start on Saturday, right, and you don't touch it, what do you think is going to happen the next Saturday when you show up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's not. So we're, we're getting close on time. A couple people died. I don't know. Motorcycle guys, flat track. Can you believe that? Two guys at the same track on the uh, pretty much on the same weekend. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Oh. So our blessings go out and condolences go out to their families there. That that's horrible. Arnold Palmer, dead. Uh, Jose Fernandez. That's twenty four. Fishing accident. Terrible. Bad. It means it's precious, Lippy. It is. Right. So we tell everybody you know you love them because you just never know when it, when. It, this might not be here. Uh, the 29th, Salem Speedway. Flat track bikes are going to open it up. So we're Speedway. Getting there. October 30th will be the Speedway. Yep, that'll be on a Sunday in the flat track bikes. And uh, that challenge is going to be cool. Um, Schofields, Cars and Parts, two races. If you can, uh, what is it, take the top five or whatever in the thing, you get some big money. Jason Suchus has got some cool stuff going on. He's making some professional flyers. He's going to have them there. Uh, took some heat of advice from Mr. Phil Fowl. So I'm just excited, you know, and I hope everybody else is too. Um, geez, what I want to say. Uh, Dave Chisholm, congratulations. I read some of your posts on there. Uh, Sean Hill retiring, I think it sounds like. But, um, it, it, you know, I don't know. I... I don't want any of those guys to go away. They're just such good guys. Um, what else uh, coming up? Big weekend. I hope I beat Grace Harbor calling that show. I don't know. I got to get a hold of Bert. I don't know. Anybody knows how to get a hold of Bert Johnson, hit me up on the Northwest Race Report Facebook page. Um, that's about it. Chris C., if you're listening, man, I hope you come out to Phoenix. I'm anxious to uh, meet you. In oh, the cruise, the cart cruise, next year, July uh, 2017. Harold Wiggins from Phantom, they put together a, it's a cart cruise, 2017 uh, cart cruise. They are going to the Western Caribbean. So if you want to go on that, you can um, check them out. Go to uh, the Phantom webpage. They've got some stuff on it. I just saw the ad for it today. So it sounds like a good time. Uh, I'm trying to look for it here. It was... Uh, July, uh, I think it was in July, right? So let's see here. God, you think I have all this stuff down, but anyway, I know that's there. Go to Phantom, check it out. Maybe we go on a cruise next summer. No, there we can't because I got the Nationals. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Um, come on out and support the uh, Grace Harbor. I think I don't know what's going on back there. Jonathan Cash, great job, our man. Uh, jamming. Uh. Johnny, the speedster. I think he was on the pole back there for that big race uh, that Johnny Cash won. But, uh, oh, baby. I don't know, man. Crazy week for me. Yep. Renee Angel, Chance Crum, Jeff Eden. Thanks for calling in. 
April Tower, thank you <laughs> for allowing your hubby to come. Uh, She's making Irish cream. Make this show what it is because it would not be. It would be. Uh, it, it, it would be tough without him. He's uh, some good motivation. Steve Miller. Thank you. Thank you for dude, having me. Dude, it's my honor. Um, I just want to tell you, you know, it, 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 don't ever be ashamed. The only thing I might tell you would be ask for some help sooner when that carb's doing all right. Just go <laughs> say, Lippy, guys, say, you know, don't sit there and, you know, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, it, it ended up being the ignition, and Lippy told me before what to do, and I, I did it. It started coming, um, and then. Right, it went south again, and uh, uh, Mike Collins came over there, and y- or Lippy pointed out it was ignition again, um, and then he came over, and Mike Collins came over and helped out a little bit, mm-hmm. and uh, from there, it's uh, it, I feel more like it's uh, more about what I can do with it than how it's you know how it's well, running. at least not runs. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wo- right? woke you're, up. Yeah, you're not having to push it around there, which would be hard for anybody, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Hey, all you guys, Scott Keeney, good to see you back. I hope we're going to see you this winter. He's already ready for the first race. I see Brian Williamson's on Yes, here too. BW, they're working on the 227. Tony Williams, oh, man, that thing's going to be just out of sight, off the charts. Uh, Stingray Rob, Stafford Smith did a good job over there at Meridian there in the Canaan West series. BLG Blue Norse, Joe Ransom hooking them all up all the time. Um Hey, Kevin Bridges, did you hear that Ryan Fernandez won down there at Cycle Land? That was pretty cool. Three, only three UAS carts showed up. Yeah, it's unfortunate. That's a pretty sad deal there. It was a pretty slick track, I heard, but, uh, you know, just it's winding down the end of summer and everybody's got something different to do. So uh, it's just the way it works out. Troy Diotti's on here, too. Yeah, Mr. Diotti's awesome. So I think, uh, Lippy, I mean, we need to probably let these go. I mean, we could probably go. Two, but but I, but I do want to tell you guys. Um, I know you say, oh, you know, give us a little help. Just take the time. It only takes a little bit of time, and you know, just each one of you just put on there. Hey, you know what? I'd like to hear about this, or why don't you find out about this? Or I don't, you know, it's okay to say you don't know because we don't know everything either. So, just give us some clues, some hints, some stuff that you'd like to hear. Maybe it's just nothing. Maybe you don't, maybe you already know everything, and you just want some entertainment. So. Maybe we can get um, Steve Miller back with his band, <laughs> and uh, we can sing "Take the Money and Run" and "Fly Like an Eagle." And uh, we are going the into Joker. the winter, so we're we're looking for substance for the right. show for sure. So please, if there's a poll there, I mean, like it. We love that, but um, just put a little something, you know. I mean, just something to help us out here. That that'd be really cool. And be sure you go by the website terrybridges.com. I got a new player up there now. And it's kind of slick. It's got uh, the the background uh, of the player as a picture. Kind of cool. Check it out. You got to go to the page to check it out. TerryBridges.com backslash listen dash live dash two. Don't forget Northwest Ford Focus Midget Series. Put a www dot in front of that and then a dot com after that. That's where you can go find out more information about this exciting class on there. Because it's awesome. Wicked Fab, South Bay Automotive, Creative Ink and Design, Scott Seal Coat, O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies. Salem Speedway. Salem Speedway, man. Jason Such is getting it done. The picnic table king. Firefingers Such. Mm. It's going to be a good year. I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you guys are too. Have a good week. The what's left of it. Um, I guess we'll see you next week. I promise. Lapping with Lippy is still here. <laughs> we I'm just. just uh, I'm just busy. It's. Coming. I know. It's I know. Coming. I know. We got all winter. So we're going to do some cool stuff. So hang with us. Hang tough. We love you. Thanks for all the support. I can't tell you how much. Uh, I mean, this is bigger than I ever thought it was going to be. So thanks, you guys. Ryan Diotti, be sure you go to the Hitman's new website. Uh, DRI-.com. Is that what it is? I think dr www.drionline.com. Yeah. yeah, there you go. He's got some good swag there. Use the discount code NWRR. Get 20% off your purchase. I've already seen some post-ups about that. They're yeah, getting their I'm stuff. I'm telling you, man. Showing up. We hook you up, but you got to get it here first. So thanks for support. Diotti, thank you, man. Brian Esquinia, Blue Line Graphics. You're the man. Uh, stickers, maybe, please, a few. We'll talk to you. He's still looking for his second place prize. Oh, he'll get it when I get my stickers. I'm holding it hostage. <laughs> so, you know I love you, man. 
talk to you soon. Kevin Bridges, get that spray working. I can't wait to see that thing work. Um, oh, my gosh. And the world has come to an end because Milton Singleton has got a four-stroke. He's got a big motorcycle motor. I can't wait to see how that's all going to pan out. I hope it works out good for Anna and him. And uh, we'll see you next week. Miller, you got anything you want to tell anybody? Uh, just thanks thanks to um, any, any support from my family that I've mm-hmm. gotten. Um, pretty much anybody racing out there, out of CKA. Um, What's the name of your business? Uh, it's Miller Kitchen and Bath. Miller Kitchen and Bath. They get it all done. That's yeah, right. They do, uh, do all sorts of floor covering, um, just about any kind you can think of. So. so give them a call. Support those that support us, that support you. All right? Miller Absolutely. Kitchen and Bath. You can find them. Look them up online. And uh, they can do any bathroom, any remodel in less than a day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, they do good work. You know they're going to be stand-up guys. So thanks a lot, everybody. We'll uh, be talking to you next week. We love you. Thanks. We'll talk to you. Hey, race fans, this is Wetline Racing. You're listening to the Northwest Race Report.